You know, I think that, you know, I've always been an artist. You know, as a young kid, I was always a maker where, it, you know, I used my hands to make everything. You know, I think coming from a textile background, like at the end of the day, my foundation is very much rooted in textile. Uh, you know, I've always, you know, I started out in high school weaving. Um, you know, I took my first weaving class when I was 17 at the University of Missouri. So I was already interested in this notion of building a cloth, making a, a fiber of sort. And I think it was in 92, the Rodney King incident. Prior to that, you know, I'm being an artist and trying to find my way and, and you know, having shows here and there. And I felt like, you know, a gypsy. I felt like this sort of person that was sort of this nomad that was just sort of moving about, trying to sort of find, settle somewhere, but wasn't so sure where that would be. And, and, um, and then in 92, everything turned upside down. You know, I'm sitting in the park thinking about the Rodney King incident, and I'm thinking, you know, was thinking about what I've been reading around his sort of identity. You know, thinking about they were like saying things like larger than life, you know, worked out with prison weights, scary. And I'm like, well, what does that look like? And then I was thinking about just the brutal attack on his physical body and feeling discarded, feeling less than. And so I'm sitting in the park and I look down and there's this twig and that twig sort of brought all of it together because it was something discarded it was something that was, you know, I could dismiss. And it was irrelevant. But for some reason, I just I just started collecting these twigs. Then I went back home to the studio, brought my sort of rolling cart, and then started to, uh, to pursue that. Brought it back to the studio and started to make this cloth, this three-dimensional skin. And the moment that I sort of made this skin out of thousands and thousands of twigs and then uh, looked at it as, a, as an object, and then it dawned that, oh, I could actually put this on. And then I started to think about you know, when I put it on, it was something that was unfamiliar. Something that could look scary, um, but yet at the same time, it was a suit of armor. It was something that was protecting my soul. And then the moment that I put it on and started to move in it, it made sound. And so that's how sounds would came about. And so, and when it made sound, then it made me think about the role of protest. In order to be heard, you gotta speak louder. So. You know, I don't draw. I, I never drew, have drawn a sound suit as a starting point. I just really go into uh, just material and, and sort of, you know, that's what provokes shape. That's what provokes form. You know, once I did the first one out of twigs, it also made me think about sort of um, all the excess, all the surplus, all the, you know, and ideas of sustainability. There is so much material outside of my studio that's in the world that is so accessible anywhere from bottle caps to buttons. And so then I focused on building probably a 
body of work, probably 12 sound suit sculptures. An extraordinary breakthrough moment uh, that I found that was part of an exercise is that when I, you know, there was a moment where I was antiquing, thrifting, uh, and I found myself going, uh, and that's why I would, you know, that was research that was also collecting surplus. Um, but at the same time, over time, I found that I was making work in the moment. You know, if I found this object, then I, then I, and if I knew what the support object was, then I found myself finding that within that same sort of scouting. So I found that I was making work in the moment of collecting sources and research that I just started to tap into this sort of rhythm of building work, like on the spot, in the moment, and being fluid and paying attention to the sort of purity of that sort of uh, way of, of what I considered like this performance drawing. You know, I think for me, when it comes to medium, I have been one who's always believed that you have to find the medium that best supports the idea. So if I have to work in clay, I have to work in clay. If it's bronze, then it's bronze. You know, it's not that it's one medium versus another. It's really me sort of like, uh, really again, looking at the work, thinking about the content, and really asking myself, so what medium will translate uh, the message and carry the meaning best? And so then that's what I work in. Installation work is, you know, it's a different arena altogether. Uh, you know, when it comes to my installations, we're talking about spaces that really can accommodate hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. It's a space that allows you to think about immersiveness. Uh, it's a space that allows me to think about programming because I want you to be able to to be immersed into a moment that allows you to step outside of your world, to be transformed into another existence. Uh, yeah, I think about like Mass Mocha's installation and and as you walked into Mass Mocha, you would you entered and there was a spinner forest. But from a distance, it's this it's like this sort of massive kinetic installation that is flickering and it's it's reflecting light and it's spinning and it's all this sort of movement. So it's like sensationally just fantastical. But as you get closer to the spinners, you real you know, these spinners we know. We know them as in your backyard, enhancing the garden, you know, bringing light to, to space, reflection. But as you got closer to the spinners at Mad Smoker, you saw bullets and guns. So all of a sudden I'm hitting you just right in the gut. And so at that moment, you're like in conflict, like this is not so beautiful and yet this is traumatic and, but what I'm talking about is that these, the disparity in this sort of world we think is, it's right in our backyards. 
And so that's that sort of contrast that I'm sort of giving you, like this emotion, that emotion. I think that craft has always been a part of my practice, a real key part of my practice, always. Um, and it has changed in the most incredible way. It's, you know what, it, what's amazing is that all of these categories are being diminished. So it's not about craft, uh, sculpture, uh, painting, because there's so many artists that are sort of crossing over blending uh, the lines are blurred it's all over the place and craft is very very much part of that delivery it is here it is being very present and it's being very seen within these artists uh, practices and I think that again Artists are becoming multidisciplinary. They're not sort of locked down by using one medium to say everything. They're like folding in all types of things and methods and ways of working um, that allows the work to sort of be more hardy. So, you know, I'm, I'm very much excited about where craft is right now. Mm -hmm.